I'm Roger Wakefield, lead AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on YouTube and Facebook and all kinds of cool places. Welcome back to the Sunday live stream or Saturday live stream. God, I don't even know what day of the week it is anymore. But this is Sippin' Saturdays. As you see, there might be a bottle of Jack over my shoulder. Not saying that we're going to get into it. I'm actually drinking unsweet iced tea right now. But how's everybody doing today? Happy Saturday to you. If you can hear me, let me know. We've got a new mixer board in here, so we're doing things a little bit different. But if you can hear me, just let me know. You know, put hashtag yes or something like that. That way I know that people can hear me. Uh, but happy Saturday to y'all. How's everybody doing? Let me see. Fix a few things right here. Get my live chat going. <clears throat> Sound is crystal clear. You got to love it. Good deal. Number one, thank you to Colton for, man, coming in on a Saturday, helping me get everything set up. And apparently I'm doing something wrong. Ah, check that out. I like that. I like that. Thank you, sir. Okay. So see, man, I learned all kinds of new things. Uh, that is very, very interesting. I want to jump down here and say hello to Jacob Bowling. How are you? Thank you for the super chat. Roger, I know this channel is about plumbing, but I'm just curious if you have any children. I do. Yes, I do. So let's jump into the chat since everybody is jumping in and getting busy. Good morning, Mr. Sean Strong. How are you doing, brother? Great seeing you in here as always. Uh, got a happy Saturday from me. I love it. Mr. Colton Casada, the man, the myth, the legend. Look, it is great to have a videographer like Colton in here. Man, he comes in, he changes things up, gets it set up, and then comes in and says, hey, there's some new tricks you can see. So appreciate all you do. Uh, yeah, hello hello to Colton and, and hello back. Sean Strong says, check out Roger's subreddit and Discord. Now, if y'all don't know Sean, you should. Uh, Sean is actually, man, boom, underscore the plumber, and he's got a new name too, so... But check him out over on Instagram. He's doing some cool stuff. But he jumps in. He runs the subreddit and the Discord and, and does some great stuff over there. So, Sean, again, thank you. Good to see you in here, as always. Franklin Kellogg, happy Saturday to you. Good to see you, too. Well, that's what's wrong. That's why I feel like I'm looking way over there. There we go. It gets a little closer. I kind of like that. Uh, sounds great. I love it. And there it is. Mr. Jacob Boeing. Thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate it. And yes, I do. I've actually got a son. So pretty cool. Okay. How do I do that? And how do I go back and put it back? Oh, there we go right there. Perfect. Okay. So man, I'm, I'm playing my new toys. How's everybody doing today? Number one, happy Saturday. Number two, I want to ask y'all a question. Let me see if I can do it down here. So I'm going to try what he just told me. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a poll. Uh, I put that all wrong. <laughs> uh, Man, it takes me a while just because of my spell check. Uh, man, I, I just put a poll in here. Y'all do me a favor and, and let me know 
do you drink bourbon? Uh, and the reason I'm asking is, man, we're wanting to do some cool things. We're literally wanting to turn this into a Saturday, a sipping Saturday live stream, but more of a variety show, not just this. So the cool thing about that, okay, and Colton, if you're still here, I've got a link here to ask questions in the Google form. Let me see if it'll let me take over here. It gives me the deal to ask the questions, but I don't know that I can see everything in here. Uh, I may have to log in over here. See, I'm going to figure this out. Y'all watch me. I got this down. I don't know how I got it down, but I got it down. <clears throat> All right. Colton, you can play with the mouse here. I've got, see, man, it's nice having help. Anyway, uh, do, do y'all drink bourbon? And, and the reason I ask is we're talking about changing up our ladder, our Saturday live stream. We're wanting to do some really cool stuff. So thank you, sir. Uh, we're wanting to do some really cool stuff. We're wanting to start cooking out back. Uh, we're here at our office, our shop in Richardson. We're wanting to start cooking out back. So that means I come in on Saturday mornings, fire up a grill, fire up a smoker, do some different things like that. Went and looked at safes the other day to use as a liquor cabinet for the bourbons, the tequilas, which are two of my favorite things to drink. So, man, I just wanted to know how many of y'all drink bourbon. Uh, and it doesn't tell me who you are. It just it just lets me check the poll, which I really like. Uh so I don't get to call you out and say, look, I know you're a drinker, uh, but it's nice to know. Sean says, sounds good. Thank you. And got some hashtag yeses. Uh, good medicated. Well, if you're talking about the Sippin' Saturdays, there may be a little self-medication going on there. Uh, Marvin Teron says, I hear you. Got a yes, got a yes, got a yes. I love it. Thank you all very much. And, and, and those thank yous goes out, go out to, uh, Marvin, Mary, Franklin and Alan. I appreciate it. Will you be addressing flat rate versus TNM? And actually Mikey, I will. So today we are, we're, we're talking about starting your own business and a lot of people, man, they're just like, look, I just want to start my business so I can make more money. And don't get me wrong, you'll make money if you do it right. But what I want to tell you is that's not a good reason to start your business. Now, when I started Texas Green Plumbing, I started it because I was working as a director of operations for a large mechanical contractor. And I did not like the things I was hearing. Uh, I was in an executive meeting one day. Now, remember, I was director of operations, so I was over the new construction part. And I walked in, and yes, I'm wearing burnt orange today. I know this is out of my norm, but the Texas Longhorns are playing today. So everybody wants them to beat TCU. So come on, people. So any, anyway, my, my thought is, when I opened my company, or, or when I went to this e-board meeting one morning, literally the owner of the company is talking about how they're branching off into service. And, you know, they're, they're going to blow up. They're, they're going to take over. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. And she said, we're going to advertise a market that we have the best trained plumbers. And it, we're going to focus on customer service. So I asked her, I said, okay, so you, you're going to tell people you have the best trained plumbers. How are you going to train your plumbers? She said, what do you mean? And she said, well, we're going to tell people we have the best trained plumbers. I said, okay, what do you mean by that? She says, Roger, I don't get it. I said, what kind of training are you going to do for your plumbers? And she literally said, well, our plumbers know how to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, please, thank you, stuff like that. And I thought, wow, man, what a mess that is. Then the next thing I said, so or, or that, that was about customer service. I said, so what about, what about the best trained plumbers? And she said, well, what do you mean? She said, all our plumbers have licenses. I said, yeah, so do the plumbers for every other company in Texas. And she says, yeah, but, but that means they've gone through training. And it's like, man, that is not the kind of company I want to be involved with. So I did. I ended up leaving, ended up starting my own company because I thought I wanted to bring something better out there. So, you know, when you 
ask about different things about starting your business, I want you to start there. It's not just to make more money because I promise you, you're going to work harder than you ever have. I was literally was sitting next to a guy, a roofer, talking to him about business and, and says he's been doing it since he was 19. But man, we, we all work harder once you start your own business. You, you put in a lot more hours. They're, they're harder hours because you're the one doing the things most other people don't want to do. So it's kind of crazy. But we do it to make it work. So the different things that, that I want to talk about today, Mikey, and I want to go ahead and write these down just to make sure, is, is new versus old. Uh, flat rate versus TNM. And just service. Because to me, those, those are the, the things that make a difference. <clears throat> so we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Mikey BMX, I've done both, and there are pros and cons on both, and there are. Jonathan Wheeler's in the house. Good to see you. Zach says, it's going to be how you start your own plumbing business or any business. Zach, I talk about how you start your own plumbing business, but to be honest, the things that I talk about, it, it's it's any business. I'm going to jump down here. I got another super chat in here. Actually, a couple of the electrician's apprentices. How do you get house leads? Angie's leads and thumbtack or ripoff? Number one, great question. Uh, I don't like either one of those. I invested my money in organic. I learned social media and it started to make us grow. And that, that's something that, that I teach. But the big thing about it is start using social media. Start putting what you're doing out there. And, and, and that's just a great way to do it. You do that. And in an electrician's app, tell me where you're at. Uh, you start doing stuff like that, you can grow organically, meaning people see what you do. And then somebody else says, you know, wow, you know what? I need a new toilet set. And they're like, oh my gosh, I saw the electrician's app set. He did this job where he set this toilet. And man, it looks so good. And I know I'm doing a real stretch there, making you a plumber. But you know, the cool thing is, is look, it works. It really does work. And I got one more super chat down here. Jacob Bowling says, my uncle started his own pressure washing business 26 years ago. Still is pressure washing today. Today, I will be changing a, a fill valve. What is the hardest fill valve you ever changed or replaced? And it was an old Kohler, uh, one piece, or, or I'll say it was a one piece toilet, brass. Uh, one of the old brass ball cocks, not just a fill valve. And man, it, it was, it was a whooping. Uh, it was tight getting in it. It, but man, it was a beautiful toilet. It was one of those low boy one piece and Jacob, man, I got to tell you, it, it was tough, but it was cool to do. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the heck out of it. All right. Let me jump back up where I am or where I was. Talk, talking about, do I have a son, Mr. Henry Wakefield, in the house? How you doing? Lost little man says, who doesn't drink bourbon? Man, there might be some people, but man, we're going to make it cool. We really are. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit, too. Zach Zadich says, uh, it's going to be how you start your own plumbing business or any business. Yes, indeed. You know, the, the things that I teach... And I mean, think about this. You, you've got to you've got to do all your stuff right. You, you've got to register your name. You got to go through the Secretary of State. You, you got to make sure you got the li right licenses and insurance and just everything. But man, if a plumber can do it, anybody can do it in any business. I talk about plumbing because that's what I'm familiar with. That's what I did. But to be honest, if you want to start your own business, you go through and you do these things that I'm talking about. It it you can do it in any business. Bullseye Crypto says, your plumbing videos has helped launch me into a career that pays well enough for me to possibly afford a house. Uh, Bullseye Crypto, number one, I appreciate that. It, man, it, if you would ever shoot me an email or, or jump into the form and, and, and leave me a review, a comment, anything at all like that, I love it. We are building some co really cool stuff. So I love when I hear messages like this. 
Lost Little Man says, who doesn't drink bourbon? God, I love that. I keep coming back to it. Jonathan Wheeler, everybody here is doing wonderful. <clears throat> Talking about iced tea. <coughs> Awake and breathing. Cowboy back in the house as the plumbing company is wanting to start me as a drain tech and then an apprenticeship five or six months down the road. Is that at normal? Well, here's the deal. Cowboy, it's, it's different for different companies. They're going to start you out where they need you. And then if you do well there, they can move you into other things. I don't mind starting out as a drain tech. You get somebody that knows how to really clean drains and clean them very well. Man, that is a great gig. So if it's something you're interested in, jump in with both feet. It sounds like a good deal to me. Uh, Laura Lula. Man, I hope I got that right. So I'm a maintenance guy in an apartment complex. Sewage came up in the bathtub in the whole building. The plumber put a camera and found nothing. Can I clog to the main drain to city unclog itself? Yes, it can. Here's the deal. You, you, when it starts filling up tubs and stuff like that, it puts more pressure on it. So say it's a soft stoppage, uh, poop, toilet paper, got paper towels, anything like that you get a little bit more pressure on it, it can actually push that out. Or maybe they're using Cottonell flushable wipes and they dissolve and then they go away. It can always happen. Matt Solarth says, greetings from Norway. Glad to have you in here. Yeah, well, we're, man, we're, we're over 50. We're not quite there yet. But you know what? Everybody put in where you're from and what you do. Where are you located? What part of the country are you in? What part of the world are you in? And what do you do? And I guess we are there. I, I've, I've got... 55 over on YouTube. I got 65 over in Facebook and everywhere else. So yeah, we're, we're over hundred. So good. How is everybody today? Where are you from and what do you do? Alabama truck driver, Mr. Jonathan Wheeler down there. I see it. Sean Strong says, if you want a larger, wait, if you want longer conversations about any topics or questions, head over to the discord. There you go. Man, you can talk back and forth for a while. And there are, there's a lot of great people in there. I jump in a lot. I just, man, I'm not good at Discord. I hate to say that, but it is true. All right, so I'm going to jump over into, if you've got questions you want to guarantee get answered, uh, jump into the link up top where it says uh, questions. I guarantee to answer those or at least try to. If not, if you ask them in the chat, I might get to them, but there's no guarantees, at least over in the forum there is. All right, so Mr. Jacob Bowling says, Roger, what was the first toilet you ever worked on? Man, that's a tough question. Uh, it, it was probably, you know, uh, an American standard or something like that. I believe that's what we had in our house growing up. And I do remember getting in there and working on it and doing different things. So, you know, American standard probably, did, probably wins the cake on that one. And let me see. I got some more here. Christopher says, how do you get commercial jobs? I'm currently bidding for electrical commercial jobs on a lead software called BidClerk, but these don't work. We are licensed and in business, but need work. You know, commercial is hard to start out. And I don't know how long y'all y'all have been in business, Christopher, but my thought is if I were starting up a company right now, I would do residential service and I would try to do it better than anybody in town, man. The good thing about it, there's no net 30, net 60, net 90. You're a hero. You go in, you take care of your customers today. And the really cool thing about it is you get paid when you leave. So it, it does, it, it makes it nice. Back down to Jay Cook again. Thank you, sir. And Mikey Pot, Mikey BMX says, many companies start out plumbers in the drain department. <clears throat> uh, this allows the lead to gauge your cleanliness, ethic, understanding, drainage systems, and layout. Good way to put it, Mikey. John Deese has been a plumber helper for nine, for five months, and it is going good. You know, here's the deal. Here's the really cool thing. Man, you're starting out at a great position, John. Getting into the trades right now, number one, this is a great time. 
And you get in, you learn, and you grow. With the average age of the tradesman, the, the master of the RMPs, all of us getting higher, we're all going to be retiring soon. And when we do, man, the world is going to be open looking for tradesmen. And that's why I talk about starting your own business. Even if you're just getting into the trades right now, understand that, look, five, eight, ten years from now, you can open your own business. And if that's what you want to do, then start thinking about it now. Become the very best apprentice. Learn it better than anybody else. Become the very best journeyman, superintendent, foreman, whatever role you take, learn to do it better than anybody else. It makes all the difference in the world. The electrician apprentice says, I'm a McKinney. It's great advice. We have no social media, but I'm going to start today. Good for you. I mean, literally, you, you can buy some cheap gorilla pods. You can buy uh, switch pods, things to set up to, to set your camera up and get in and work on something. <clears throat> and when you're in there working on it, video it. Now you can go home. You can learn to edit on your on your phone, edit and post a little video about what you're doing. If you don't want to do videos, take pictures. Now, I like the video because I think that's going to make you better because then you can actually talk to people. You can literally be working on something. It's like, guys, look, I'm working on this microphone right here and this plug at the bottom. If I unplug it, it's going to stop. <clears throat> you just look at the camera, talk to it and say, hey, this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm doing it. So watch. You're going to undo this. You're going to do this. Communicate with them. Look them straight in the eye. Look dead center of that camera. Know which lens to look at and look at it. Say the words you. And talk to them like it's your best friend. And you will do phenomenal. <clears throat> Sean says, I hate color one-piece low boys. They may be small, but carrying them out is awkward. And it's getting harder to get replacement parts. And Sean, you're right. It is. It, it was hard then. And God, that was six years ago, seven years ago. The, the worst one I ever had a problem with. Joe T in the house. How we doing? Good to see you as always. Jonathan's an allied. Alabama truck driver. Elias Martinez is an HVAC here in Dallas. Gotta love it. Justin Weiss is Marilyn on a small plumbing company. Uh, Laura Lua, Washington State, planning on moving to Oklahoma. Yeah, I'll tell y'all what, man. Oklahoma's great. Mover. Texas is full. Choking. Uh, Mike Segulia says, uh, Los Angeles maintenance mechanic. Going good. I love it. <clears throat> Jacob Bolin says, I got one more super chat. Uh, so my last super chat, have the honor to call you my friend. Why did they stop making 3.5 gallon toilets? How long you been married? Well, on and off, been married for about 20 years. Uh, Jacob, the, the funny thing is... <clears throat> Three and a half gallon toilets. I think it was 1994 when they went to the low flow. And man, it's a trip. It, uh, you know, everybody said, look, it's never going to work because there's not going to be enough water to push everything out because of the way we were plumbing before then. But it's actually worked out pretty good. So, number one, thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate it. Astro Mopes is plumber in Miami, Florida. And I, do, do you know Omar the plumber? Uh, Omar's down in Florida. I get to go see him quite often. And man, such a great guy. We went and hung down, hung out together at an event for Centrotherm. And man, that, that, that was a neat product. It's actually a vent product made for tankless water heaters. And man, it was cool. All right. Franklin Kellogg says, Avoca, Pennsylvania in the warehouse. You got. I tell you what, I love our warehouse people. They keep us going. Uh, we we get things done because of them doing their job right. So man, hats off to you. Uh, Taste of Bag says Indiana. I own a plumbing business, two years now and two employees. Good for you. Sean says that there's a guy in town who was a journeyman plumber for a few years, quit and opened his own drain cleaning company. So he's not a plumber, but he's very successful. The amazing Mo Cooper in the house, Houston, Texas, baby, feeling fabulous, leading people to a fit and fun lifestyle. Man, if y'all don't know Mo, she is a workout guru. Fantastic and just an amazing person. So good to see you in here, Miss Mo. 
Sean Strong, cleaning drains can be very lucrative. Man, if you're a good drain cleaner, number one, you can make a good living. Number two, if you'll follow it up with a camera, there may be repairs to be made. And if you're a drain cleaner, you can now refer that out to plumbing companies for a fee. There's a lot of good stuff you can do as a drain cleaner. And man, like I said, become the freaking best. Doesn't matter what you do, try to become the best at it. And it will make a difference in your life forever. Brent Fadas is Tampa, Florida. Glass and glazing contractor, first year struggling with suppliers. Man, everybody is struggling with suppliers, but you're in Tampa. Did the storm get you very bad? I was actually supposed to be in Palm Beach last week, Tuesday th through Friday. Uh, I decided not to go because of the storm blowing in. Then I got a message uh, the second day saying, hey, I'm sorry you're being evacuated. We will give you a refund. Uh, the hotel that I was going to be at did a mandatory evacuation. It was kind of tough. And Rescue Air, that's where I'm part owner now. Uh, another great company. We're always looking for plumbers and HVAC technicians here in the Dallas area. Moto Vacation, they kept Moto Vacation. Hope I said that right. Hello to you. Lost Little Man says, I was a bus driver before I became disabled, and I'm from Arizona. Man, I love Arizona. I've been out there, number, number one, sorry about you being disabled. Love the fact you're a bus driver. Don't know if you mean school bus or like big buses like Greyhound. Man, that's a tough job either way, though. And man, Arizona, I love it there. I, I go speak out at Scottsdale sometimes. So I love flying into Phoenix, going over to Scottsdale. It's greatness. All right. There you go. Nightbot says, if you're enjoying the stream, please don't forget to like it and share it with a friend. Josh Graves is Northport, Florida general contractor. Just started and have more work than, yeah, than I can do. Man, here's the deal with, with the storms just blowing through. Y'all got a lot of work coming up. I, I hate to say that, but man, it, it's going to be tough on y'all. Yeah, man, the Discord group, look, guys, there's a lot going on over. Y'all really want to check it out. Uh, Shaz Rock says, Cowboy just made the Discord better. You got to love it. Should you have customers sign a contract when doing plumbing services on their home? Uh, yeah. Uh, here's what I'm going to tell you, Taste Bag. The neat thing about it is, if you'll get the right software, and I, we use Jobber, and I, I love it. And, and let me correct that. Rescue Air uses Service Titan, which, which is the big daddy of them all. Uh, with me, with Leak Pro and Leak Source, we use Jobber. And, and the cool thing about it, man, it'll do invoicing, estimating. It does so many cool things. But one of the things you can do is put together your estimate and then have them sign before you start. That way, it's harder for them not to pay. Because if you do that, and, and, and that's one of the things, too, as for starting your own business, I've literally seen estimates written on what looked like a paper towel. And once I had an HVAC guy come to my house, and he's, he sat and talked to me about everything, and I said, well, how much is it going to be? And you know, he's sitting here showing me on his iPad. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, man, that's pretty cool. He said, this is how much it's going to be. I said, okay. I said, can I get a copy of that? And he said, well, uh, you've, you've got a copy. I've, I've already emailed it to you. And I'm like, wait, do what? He had emailed me the copy. This was a, a system that he had. Fell in love with it. Started buying it, started using it. It did great. Then I found Jobber. And man, I got to tell you, Jobber changes the way you do things. It makes you look more professional. It gives you the tools you need to get estimates in front of people, invoices in front of people, get your money. It's amazing. I would check it out. And if you get it, tell them I sent you. I, I love that stuff. Mikey says, I'm a plumber and HVAC tech in the upper peninsula of Michigan. So he's in the UP. Most of us in my department follow your videos and we enjoy them very much. Number one, thank you very much. I've actually been up to Ypsilanti. Uh, I've gone to Washington Community College to do the instructor training program for the union. Mikey, man, I love your area. I've got some great restaurants up there. Now, I've never gone all the way up to the UP, <clears throat> but being down in, in Detroit and Ann Arbor, oh my gosh, it's beautiful down there. 
Uh, Lost Little Man says, does everyone here realize that plumbers increase the life expectancy from everyone more than doctors do? And that's why we say plumbers protect the health of the nation. Most doctors, if, if they're honest about it, they tell you, look, plumbers save more lives a day than we do. And it's true. What you say to plumbers that scam their customers, uh, man, I try and expose them on video. Uh, I don't like it at all. It's not a good thing. Electrician's app says, I'm going to take that advice and use the videos I have so far. Good deal. Uh, Sean Strong says, yeah, Jacob, tell them to get out. You know, and, and that's the thing. If you work with plumbers that do that, I just tell them, man, that, that ain't how we do things around here. If that's what you're going to do, head on down the road. Bad thing is there's a lot of plumbing companies that will let them do that because they want the money. Me, I want the good reputation and the peace of mind. Terrence Sarrett says, Southern Utah, doing my own plumbing part-time for a year now. Scared to lose full-time gig with benefits and insurance. Have a new baby, just nervous. Business will slow down in small towns I cover. Taryn, here's what I'm going to tell you is, number one, plumbing is recession-proof. It does not matter how bad things get, if, if plumbing is stopped up, if there's a leak, things like that, people are still going to call their plumbers. Now, it may slow down a little bit because they may be, look, I'm not going to do a big bathroom remodel right now. I'm not going to do a new toilet and faucets and showers and stuff like that right now. But, man, at the end of the day, it's, you, man, plumbing's a good living. And where are you at? Utah. Southern Utah, I don't know if it freezes so much that, that y'all get shut down for part of the year. In Texas, we don't. We work year-round. So, man, I'd say you you got a good chance at doing great. Oh, my God. It, really, you're putting Boomer Center up. Have y'all won a game this year? I mean, other than, like, Tulsa or somebody? Or did Tulsa beat y'all, too? I don't remember. Uh, Ambrose Anya says, hi, everyone. I'm a plumber here in Nigeria. Good to see you in here. Joshua C says, I've been in business three months, grossed 50K so far. Been buying parts and tools as I get the jobs. Basically, just texted all the contractors I know and asked if they needed a plumber. That's a great way to start, brother. Sean says, Omar's a good guy, and so is our buddy Conrad. Uh, they get together and share lots of plumbing content on Instagram. And there they are, Omar the plumber and Conrad the plumber. Ambrose Strong, you got to love it. Cowboy says $21 an hour plus commission. Pretty good for a drain tech. It, you know, if, if you're making both, yeah, I mean, you're making over 800 bucks a week. Commission? Dude, you, you have great opportunities there. Uh, yeah, sounds good for anything. <clears throat> Jesse Durant says Dallas, here I come. Jacob says, where I'm from, I live in North Carolina. Roger, have you ever been to North Carolina? I have. I went out to Charlotte, went out there to do a video on the Charlotte pipe manufacturing plant. Really great. <clears throat> got to try some barbecue. I got to be honest. It's not as good as Texas barbecue. It was okay. Uh, and I say, okay, it was good. Just not as good as Dallas barbecue. Man, I'm big on Texas barbecue, though. Uh, but I trust is McAllen 12. There you go. See, I, I love the Garrison brothers. I mean, I am so into Texas bourbons right now. It, it's, it's phenomenal. Remember guys, if you've got any questions, Oh, and, and I want y'all to know right, right now, man, do you drink bourbon? There's it's, it's a 50, 50. There's been 60 votes. 30 people do 30 people don't. Very interesting. And remember up top, there is a link to the forum. If you've got a question that you want to guarantee that gets answered, go up into there, put it in the forum and ask it. I, I promise you, I will get over there. All right, let's see. And, and, and let's, let's do this too. How many of y'all, and since this is about how to start your own business, how many of you have started your own business? Whether it's plumbing or something else, just put hashtag me. And, and, and it's not because I want to ask you questions or anything like that, but I'm just curious how many people in here have already taken the plunge and started their own business? Because I've done it three times. You know, I, I started speedy plumbing a long time ago. 
uh, just out of high school. Uh, I had just got my, my licenses and everything and started my little plumbing company. I was working out in the country, so I didn't have to do things quite as legal. I didn't have to have a master license, no inspections because you were out in the country. But, man, I still did things right because that's the way that I was taught, and I loved it. But my thing is, it was a bad time for me to start a business because I just wanted to make money. And that's why I go back and say, look, if you're just starting a business just to make more money, it's probably not a good enough reason. So later I started one better plumbing and I did better. But I mean, when I started speedy plumbing back in the eighties, I'd literally go out and work until I made enough money for the day. It's like, you know what? I'm good. Uh, I can do this. I can do that. And man, it just, it didn't work out. I never thought about getting ahead. I never thought about investing in my training, my education, in me. So now I do things completely different. But, you know, we, we do have some people in here that, that have started their own company. You know, doing things right and understand that you need coaches, consultants, trainers, mentors, whatever it is. I remember my very first coach was Michael Gerber, who wrote the Emeth books. Now, there have been other ones along the way, but that was my first one, the one that opened my eyes and made me think, wow, I need to learn from somebody who's been here, who's done this, and knows more about it than me. And, man, that's that's a big deal. Uh, let me see. Elora Lua says socket saver would be a last resort to fix a plumbing issue. No, not necessarily. Uh, to be honest, I, I did a video where I burned a piece of pipe out of a fitting. Now, y'all are in the live stream, so I'll be honest with you. I've never done that in the field, but I've seen other people do it before. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try it and see, is this good? Does it work? I love the socket savers. Man, any time that, like, and think about this. My company specialized in slab leaks. So if we've got a slab leak on a PVC sewer line and we come up to a section and look, this piece of pipe is broken or maybe it broke right out of fitting. Well, this fitting is good. It's tied in. There's no cracks above, none below. We can even put a, a, a plug in it and test everything else. And we say, hey, this is good. If I can use a socket saver on that, attach back to it and run everything out, that keeps me from maybe busting concrete. Digging further, I can help save my customers money. So I love that. Taste of Bag says, is Jobber like Profit Rhino, many bigger service companies here use that. I'll tell you what, and, and I'm, I'm not familiar with Profit Rhino. I think I've heard the name along the way. I would just search Jobber, to be honest, and look at what all it does. Uh, when I first found out about it, I was blown away. I'm like, man, why didn't we start using this a long time ago? They do so many things right, and the people there are phenomenal. So, man, I would just say definitely check into it. Uh, Bryce Cannon, U Bryce Cannon, Utah. Come visit sometime. Area gets pretty cold, but small towns scattered everywhere. Had more business than I thought. Appreciate your tips. Love your videos, Roger. Thank you. Number one, Taryn, you're more than welcome. That That's why I do what I do. Okay, so yeah, we, we got a few in here that have started their own company. Jeremiah France says, do you offer direct mentorship? Jeremiah, I'm getting there. Uh, it, it's funny. I, I've been working in here all morning. I'm rebranding a lot of things I do right now, but literally we've got four different programs we're putting together, teaching people to get in the trade, get the right job, teaching people to become the very best tradesmen that they can be. How do they make more money? How do they move up to foreman, superintendent, things like that, how to rise up and start their own company. And a lot of this stuff is, is based on what we'll talk about here or what we are talking about. And then how to get the right tools in our toolbox to grow their business. And we've got some that will be just digital courses that people can jump in and do. Then there's another level where there's group Q and a, and we will release a new video a month for each one of these teaching people how to do this, how to do this, how to do this. We'll talk about what we're going to teach. I'll tell them a story about how it's happened to me. We'll give them the different trainings that they need to get those things done. And then there'll be a challenge. And the challenge may be read a Michael Gerber book. 
It may be, you know, get your license and insurance. It, it could be a lot of different things. But the cool thing is there's one level that this, the, the videos, there's another level that has a monthly Q and a that man, we jump in alive, we talk, we visit people, ask questions and it, it's going to be phenomenal. So yes, I am working on all that right now. Uh, number one, I do appreciate the super chat, but definitely man, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever. We'll be talking more about it. We will have everything, I think, ready to go by the end of the year. Joshua says, literally, as soon as I got licensed, I went out on my own. Good for you. Cowboy says, I'm nervous about switching careers to plumbing from a maintenance tech just due to my option of creating my own schedule right now. The plumbing is strictly 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you know, here's the deal. You're going to get, and there's plumbers that I know that are like, look, I don't want to work evenings. I don't want to work weekends. And, and you know what? The bad thing about that is, I mean, you're, you're, you're limiting yourself. Now, you've got a reason. You've got other jobs. But some of these people are like, look, I just don't want to work weekends. Well, what does your company need? Are they growing? Do they need help? And this is the company that's investing in you and helping you. We, we've all got to look at it different ways. For some people, the trades aren't right. For some people, man, getting into the trades is not the right thing to do. It's tough. You've got to figure out what you're going to do. And, and I even asked one of my plumbers this one day because he was literally leaving the job because he said, look, I don't want to work weekends. I said, okay. But you're learning great things here. You're growing and you want to open your own business one day. He said, yeah. I said, so what are you going to do when you get a plumber that doesn't want to work weekends? And man, you could tell he hadn't thought about it. And man, I miss this plumber. I love him to death. He's a great guy. But my thought is, look, we're only asking you to work one weekend a month. Not, not every weekend, not every other weekend, one weekend a month. And everybody had the right to say, you know, hey, Jacob, I, I really don't want to work this weekend. Do you want to pick up an extra weekend? And some plumbers would do it just for the extra hundred bucks. So, you know, it, it's a trip, but. I understand switching is hard to do, but where are you going to be three years from now, five years from now, if you don't do it fast? And, and that's why I'm teaching the things that I'm teaching. I don't mean that in any way other than, look, I learned a lot of tricks growing up in the trades. And I've learned how to, how to move up. You know, when I joined the union, Man, I was just a plumber. I moved up to be a foreman, a superintendent. I moved up to be director of operations for one of the large mechanical contractors. But I also ran some of the biggest jobs in Dallas. And it's because of the things that I learned along the way that helped me get to where I wanted to be. But the one thing I'll tell you, even in the union, you can make pretty much whatever you want to make. When union scale was $25 an hour, I was making 50 Actually, I was making 51 something, 5150 or something. You can make whatever kind of money you want to make. You can make a great living, but you've got to be open minded. So that's why I asked Cowboy, where are you now? And a lot of people tell me I cannot get in the trades because I can't afford to. Th then do what you got to do to get it to where you can afford to. When I was first plumbing, I had two other jobs. I, I tended bar and waited tables at night. I became a fence builder and a redwood deck builder on the weekends. I did anything I could to make enough money until I could get to the point where I didn't necessarily have to. By then, I was a great bartender, and I loved the extra money. Man, I just kept doing it. Got sure here. Good to see you. Peter says, says hello, Roger. I'm a plumber from Ghana. How do I charge for a job done? <coughs> You know, Peter, it's going to be hard for me to tell you that. I would have to say, what are other plumbers around there charging? Not that that's everything, because if you're providing a better service, you know, we, we, we do red carpet service, white glove service, black tie service, whatever you want to call it. We go above and beyond to try to make everything better. And that's what we're all about. If you're providing a service like that, you can charge more than other people are charging. 
And you know, a good friend of mine is a plumber here in the Dallas area, and he makes great money. This guy probably makes two to three hundred thousand dollars a year as a plumber running a truck. And you know, we were talking one day, and, and we were talking about the sales process and going through it, communicating with the customer, and getting them to buy in and, and getting that signature for them to say, "Hey, go ahead and go to work." And man, I looked at him, and he just he smiled from ear to ear, and he said. That's when the performance starts because now you let them know, look, I'm protecting your floor. I'm cleaning up your bathroom. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Once the performance starts, that's when they know that what they're paying for was well worth it. You've got to sell them the value. Sean Strong says, e -Myth is fantastic self-help. Yes, it is. <clears throat> And yeah, plumbing is not strictly seven to five. Matter of fact, when the real emergencies happen, it's, it's normally between that five and the seven the next morning. Cowboy says, with this company, it is unless the call takes longer. Yep. And, and look, when I was running Texas Green Plumbing and I only had three or four plumbers, we didn't work weekends and overtime. We, we tried not to. I didn't have enough guys and I didn't want to burn them out. Taste of Bags has left my old boss because he wanted us to take shortcuts. I made my plumbing business right way plumbing because I focus on quality. Good for you, brother. I love that. <clears throat> Not but keeping an eye on my back. Chris, uh, Ashan says, Chris Chesky, absolutely. Always say plumbing don't care because it doesn't matter what time it is or if it's a holiday, it's going to break when it breaks. Hey, old plumbing. Hello from Grand Prairie. How are you? I am over in Richardson, Texas right now. Jeremiah Fran says, 40-year-old in local 189 plumbers and pipe fitters. 200 GPM, 400 PSI jet, three vans, 10 years building, no employees. Wow. Columbus, Ohio, love your channel. Man, I, I tell you what, now three years and no employees. 10 years building no employees. Now, I don't know what you mean by that, but but that, that's one thing too. When I set my pricing, I always wanted to set my pricing where I could afford to pay an apprentice to be in the van with my plumbers. The reason being is that I wanted to build my own plumbing crew. I wanted them to learn from the plumbers. I wanted them to learn how to fix things. I wanted them to learn how to use Jobber or whatever system I was using. I wanted them to learn customer service and communication skills and everything that we were teaching. So, man, it's it's a big deal. So, Jeremiah, man, if you've been, you got that, if, is that one jetter, I guess? Man, you're doing good. <laughs> and here's the thing. You don't have to have employees. You know, you can do this. A, a good plumber, think about the guy I told you about a while ago. He works for another company and he's making two to three hundred grand a year. I don't know what kind of percentage he's making. If he just did that same amount of work by himself, he'd be making three to four hundred grand a year. So, I mean, you can make an amazing living in this trade. <clears throat> uh man, Jeremy, that's all I'm gonna call you. Uh, I've just joined the Institute to Study Plumbing. So, Jeremy, what institute are you talking about? Um, not sure. Chris Chesky says, and somebody will come out whenever they call. And, and you know, that's one thing. You know, you know, we're talking about starting your own business. Learn to get out and network. Learn to get out and, and tell people what you do and how you do it and why you do it. Getting out and networking, building a network is huge. It's a great way to grow your business. It's a great way to make the phone ring. But the coolest thing about it is you talk to people, you learn to help them, you learn to help them grow their business. But at the same time, they're helping you grow yours. Networking to me is one of the smartest things you can do. You, you can get really good at it. Learn to talk about what you do, what problems you solve. And man, people will buy from you all day long. 
Jacob says, Roger, I hope you never shave off that awesome stash, but have you ever thought about shaving it? You know, I, I really hadn't. Uh, I, I like it, so I, I don't worry about it. Cowboy, thank you, sir. I appreciate you being in here. Fron Humperdinck says, yeet. Anand Abraham, how are we doing? Sean Strong says, all the service providers in my area are still charging under $100 an hour. For labor, and I think the cheapest here should be about 130 Materials are still going up, and employees need to be making more. Most, I only know one company in this area, Sean, charging 125 I don't know anybody charging less than that. I know there's a lot of plumbing companies here charging three, four, and five hundred dollars an hour. So if you sell the value, if you bring great value to customers, they'll pay for it. I promise. Scott says we do plumbing and electrical work. We always try to go above and beyond for our customers doing the work properly and leaving the job area clean with no damage. Mm-hmm. Vasil Christen says, Roger, love your channel. I'm from Chicago on a small plumbing company. What do you think about the new Moen M core valve? I want to play with it some more. I want to take them apart and, and do different things. I have not done a lot with them. Anytime something new comes out, I give it a little while, then I dig into it. So what are your thoughts on it? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, Jacob says, what's the funniest plumbing failure you've seen in your long plumbing career? Man, failures are tough uh, because I don't make a lot of them. Uh, I've, I've seen them by their plumbers. I say, I say a lot of it is just you know, putting in plumbing wrong, put, putting in the wrong fittings. You know, I remember one of the first union jobs I walked onto. My foreman was a fitter. And he took me to this area and said, hey, you're going to be down here. He says, look, you're a plumber. I'm a fitter. You probably know more about this than I do, but I'm going to put you down here, and here's what all we're trying to do. I'm sitting here, and I'm looking up, and I said, I'm, I'm assuming that's mop sinks or something on the floor above. He said, yeah. I said, well, those vents are wrong. They're in backwards. He said, well, how do you know? I said, well, I can tell by looking. He says, well, man, one, one of the guys, one, one of his guys, one of the union plumbers, just installed that last week. I, I, don't, I don't think it's wrong. So I'm telling you, those, those two fittings there are backwards. He said, well, why don't you work on this area over here? Here's what I want you to do and kind of laid me out a little bit. About 10 minutes later, I noticed he brought the superintendent down there. Superintendent center looks up and says, hey, y'all got to fix those. And he looked at him, he looked over at me, and I just smiled. He came over to me and said, look, I'll, I'll never doubt you again. I said, well, I'll try to tell you what it was. Fails like that just blow my mind. But it is what it is. All right. Chuck Lawrence says, any advice for maintaining plumbing in a crawl space that isn't accessible? 120-year-old house, needing a pressure regulator, shutoff, and house filtration. Number one, Chuck, if it's unaccessible in the crawl space, can you get to it outside? Meaning once it goes under the grade beam, can you get to it there? I have never worked on a 10-gallon toilet. Taste of bags is $400 per hour average for plumbing service in Northeast Indiana. Elluria says, I want to start my own business, but I don't know if I should wait till I move or start now. If you know you're moving to another location, I wouldn't want to start it and lose it. I would look at it. it yeah, I would definitely look at moving first. Just because what if you build a good company, then you may not want to leave. Yeah, lots of good plumbing fails on subreddit. You know, on, on subreddit, man, that is the best spot to go. If you've got pictures or videos of either really great plumbing or really crazy plumbing, 
man, go over to the subreddit. Make sure you join it. It's at Roger Wakefield posts. I don't know. I got it around here somewhere. And I say that. There we go. Yeah, at Roger Wakefield Post or, or Reddit, Roger Wakefield Post. Man, that, that's where we get a lot of cool stuff. So, yeah, if y'all do that, definitely appreciate that. Uh, let me see, Sean Strong. Joshua C. says, I'm on Northwest Indiana charging 150 and 100% markup. And, and Joshua, here's what I'd ask you. How does your pricing compare to everybody else's? You know, one, one thing, when you start a plumbing company, your goal is not to be the cheapest plumber in town. And a lot of people do that. They set their prices so low that they're like, look, I'm going to be the lowest price guy in town so people call me. The problem is once you're the lowest price guy in town, it's hard to raise your prices. And think about it. Did you ever want to be the cheapest plumber there was? I always wanted to be the best. And at the time, I never even thought about charging more for that. I just literally, my thought was, how do I make more money? Because I didn't want to be the cheapest. So I wanted to make sure that when I designed things, when I built it and laid it out, this is what I want to do and how I want to do it. I wanted to make sure that I can make a good living, but I didn't want to just be the busiest, cheapest plumber in town. I mean, think about it. If you're the cheapest, you're working harder to get paid less money than everybody else is. And then when it's time to hire people, it's going to be hard to hire people and pay them, yet you still make money. You've got to set your pricing accordingly, and sometimes that's hard to do. Jerron Cannon says, I want my own business, but I'm still waiting to finish my master's license, which I'll finish it in 11 months. What are things to do to prepare for a business open? Uh, Jerron, this is a great question because because here's what I'm going to tell you. First of all, start thinking about what you want your name to be. What is your brand? What does it look like? Do you dress professionally? I mean, these are the shirts. Now, this is burnt orange, so it, it's not the color. But these are the shirts that I started wearing about five years ago. The cutoff collar, the logo on my chest, the the, the logo on the back. I wanted a certain look, starched jeans every single day, nice boots, floor savers, green gloves. I can go on and on. Start coming up with your brand book right now. What are your colors? What's the name of your company? Do you have that website? Can you get that name on every social media platform that there is? Those are the kind of things I would start looking at now start building your brand then when it's time to get your your master license your insurance things like that and you've already got everything in place so that's how i would start and i love that great question uh mikey bmx is 400 to 500 an hour seems right at a 50 to 55 percent efficiency and, and mikey the funny thing is a, a lot of people don't understand efficiency my buddy that I told you about that has the cheap plumbing company where I think they're 125 an hour, his efficiency is about 75%. He said that his guys can get six to seven hours a day in because he's in a small city and he knows his logistics. He can literally get guys from one point to another in about 10 minutes. So think about that. You do four calls a day, you've only got 40 minutes drive time. Well, that means you should have about seven hours, 20 minutes of billable time. So, man, knowing your efficiency is phenomenal. A lot of people don't even know how to do that, though. It's part of what I talk about, part of what I teach. Uh, <clears throat> put value on your product and customer service. Eli, you're 100% you're right. John Strong says, I started plumbing for Benjamin Franklin and their uniforms had us mistaken for EMTs all the time. Well, it's nice if you're trying to get that free lunch. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to jump back over into the, the, the poll. So I've got 95 votes and 55% said 
of the people say no. All right, so I'm going to screenshot that because I'm going to change it real quick because I want to ask y'all another question. And so I'm going to end that one. <clears throat> and I'm going to do one more here to finish out the day. All right, so I put a new one in here. Do you drink tequila? And I'm asking this for a reason, guys. So if you would, please, please. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll show you what we're looking at doing. Just because, man, look, y'all are my live stream. So y'all are like my favorite people. Uh, I'm going to show y'all what I'm looking at buying back there as a liquor cabinet. Uh, we go to, okay. Do, do y'all see that? That is a Browning gun safe that we are actually looking at using as a liquor cabinet back here in the shop. So, man, I love that thing. Now I'm going to show you what the inside of it looks like just because. That's what the inside of it looks like. We're, we're wanting to use this to where we can put, and I don't know if y'all see my mouse cursor or not, probably not, but where we can put on these shelves uh, bottles of bourbon, bottles of tequila, stuff like that. So anyway, that, that that's that's part of what we're talking about doing here on Sipping Saturdays. We're talking about, uh, and, and if y'all use a pellet smoker, do me a favor and tell me what brand you use uh, because I, I use one. And if you use a grill of any particular kind, what brand do you use there? And the reason I'm asking is, look, we're, we're, we're going to reach out to sponsors. We're going to find a way to do cool stuff, but we also want to be able to give some stuff away. So I'm going to ask y'all, what do y'all like? Sean says it seems like overkill to me. Man, man, that's the way I roll, brother. All right. Let me jump back in the chat here for just a minute. Uh, Eli says, your poll reminds reminds me on how the electrician went for, from states. Yeah. Yeah. Electricians, man. Look, they're tough. Josh C says, I didn't realize 150 was low, to be honest. My competitors are at least or at 89 to 120. Only two other companies that I'm aware of charge around 200. Okay, so you're in Lafayette, Indiana. And, and, and Josh, the reason I was asking is I, I don't know what is normal for around there. I would want to be closer to the 200 an hour just because if I'm going to hire plumbers, because think about it one day, Josh, you're not going to want to do all the calls. You're going to need to hire help. And if you're charging 125 an hour, Are you going to be able to pay a plumber 35, 40 bucks an hour and you still make money? And I will tell you, based on the formulas that, that I use, probably not. Uh, I, I'd, I'd say you'd need to be up around two, two, two fifty at least. And even at those numbers, depending on your efficiency rate, you're, you're going to have to keep it tight. Derek says, Hey, Roger, watching from Zambia, Africa. Derek Kazango, thank you very much. Good to see you in here. Franklin Kellogg says, nice. I love it. Uh, Woodford Reserve, Double Oak. Uh, man, that's a good one. Uh, I actually had that at a steakhouse in Pittsburgh, and it was the Double Oak. Or, or double Oak or Double H. I don't remember what they called it. Man, it was good. Of course it does, Sean. Well, it's not quite bomb-proof, but it'll, it'll stand up to a lot. Sean says, guess I forgot who I was talking to. I needed a box to get into your truck. So I guess your whiskey cabinet needs to fit the brand too. Absolutely. And, and, and man, that's the thing. It uh, Those of y'all that don't know, Sean, Sean came to town for an event that we did uh, 
we 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 invited a whole bunch of plumbers and tradespeople out to an event and it was for a happy hour on a Saturday. And I say happy hour, it was lunchtime. It was really just a big trades networking event. But but Sean came down and yeah, I, I've got probably the tallest jacked up truck on the streets in, in the Dallas area. Uh, a big old 2020 Chevy Silverado 2500 jacked up. I got 37s on it and a six inch lift kit. It's black beauty and she's amazing. Love it. Uh, so Hall K says 225 trip charge minimum. Now, and we don't do that. We, we, we do, we do a service call and okay. So, so, so let's talk vans real quick. If, if you're, in, if you're starting your own company and I want y'all to put in either new or old. If you were starting a new company right now, and, and I mean, literally when I started my company, I didn't have time to put up money. I didn't have time to do anything other than, okay, man, I'm getting started. Would you buy new vehicles or would you buy old vehicles? Would you lease new vehicles? Me, I bought old vehicles. I bought old vans. I bought vans that I could afford, vans that I could get financed. So if you were starting a new company right now, would you buy new or would you buy old or, or would you lease new? Uh, di different ways to look at, but, but I'm curious because I want to talk to y'all what I teach now and, and why I teach it the way I do. Uh, bought newer vans. Uh, well, on top of toilets, what years the first residential toilets put in homes? Uh, man, I'm, I'm not an encyclopedia. Jacob, uh, I, I don't, I don't have any idea in the 1800s. I've done a video on it. It's just been a while. All right. Eli says a way to fit the stereotype. It's always bigger in Texas, man. What can I say? I, I wish I could deny that. Uh, taste of bag says, uh, I bought newer vans. Okay. Well, the vans that I bought were about 15 years old. Uh, Actually, they're probably older than that, a little bit older than that. But but here's the deal, man. I could afford them, and they worked. But here's what happened: uh, it literally every time a van breaks down, you you lose calls, and it's not like they break down when they're just sitting at your shop. They break down where guys are on the way to a job, or they're at a job and trying to leave and go to another one. Now you've got problems because you've either got to get them another van so they can go run the calls. Then get that van in the shop and get it fixed. And man, it was just, it was a pain. But we we made it work until we could afford to lease new vans. And, and I did. I started buying newer vans after that. But even after a while, they start breaking down. So I love the lease vehicles. I think it's a great idea. And to be honest, when I was paying for the payment on the newer vans, what we uh what we were able to lease vehicles for. Josh C says, thanks for the advice. I'll raise the prices. I just bought a used van. Good for you. And look, here's the thing. If you got a used van, put it in the shop, get it serviced, have it checked out. Man, keep it running. That is such a big deal. Use your services. Make sure that, that you keep the, the oil change. You get everything done. Man, when you lose a van, it can kill you. John says, used. Sean Strong says, you ever getting the opportunity to meet and hang out with Roger? Highly recommend it. What you see in live is what you get in person. Roger's genuine. He's kind and helpful and most of all fun. Well, Sean, thanks. Look, I, I love what I do. You, you know that. Uh, I love tradespeople. I think tradespeople are the greatest people on earth. So it, it man, it, it makes life fun. So if I were starting a new company now, and, and remember, I'm an old school plumber. I grew up doing time and materials. But what I've learned is if you'll do flat rate pricing, if you'll do upfront pricing, straightforward pricing, whatever they want to call it, and you get it set right, and a lot of them have formulas that you can use. And the, these formulas, you base your formula on hiring the best plumber in town. 
if I could hire the best plumber in town, what would it cost me? And then there's a formula you put together to where you make money because, you know, your field labor should cost you 20%, your office labor, 10%, your material, 17%, marketing, 10%, overhead and all that, 43%. You got to know your numbers, but you get in, you know, your numbers, you put it together and you're like, okay, if I want to pay my field labor this much money, here's what we need to be charging. And I even added extra. I took what my formula told me, added $25 an hour because I want to hire an apprentice in every one of those trucks too. Do y'all do TNM? How many of y'all do TNM? How many of you do, let's call it flat rate pricing? Or how many of you just work on commission? Because there's a lot of that going around too. And, and it's not a bad thing if you get the right people doing it. If I were starting a new company right now today, and, and I know we're down to about 20 minutes to go here. If I was starting a new company today, number one, I would try to lease my first vehicles. I understand it's going to cost me money, but I also understand I need new vehicles that can be branded and look great. That is a rolling billboard. You want your people to keep them clean, serviced, and well-stocked because that's what it should be, a rolling warehouse but it's also a billboard because you should have it branded where it's got your name all over it. So that's how I would start. I would charge a flat rate price. I would know I would buy a book or invest in it, invest in the knowledge to build the book, to put together a pricing system that, that I believed in, that my plumbers could believe in, that, that everybody could believe in. And I would do residential service because you get paid now. You can treat your customers amazing and they'll always call you back. It, it's easy to get out and, and start networking. It's easy to get out and start doing social media. It's easy to start making that phone ring. And, and I know because I did it. And once I learned to do things right, it started paying off and, and that is huge. Jeff's is starting new, buy what you can afford. Don't want to get stuck uh, living for a payment on a new vehicle. And man, I don't disagree, but if you've got a vehicle that's non-dependable, it can kill you later. So, you, you, But you're right. Start with what you can afford. And that's why I did. I started with the old vans. As soon as I could, I got into newer. Then as soon as I could, I started leasing brand new. And, and man, it was a game changer. Tasty Bags is one of the most affordable, effective way to advertise social media. And social media is the most affordable because you do it yourself. You're personality marketing. You're showing people, you're talking to people, you're telling them what you do, why you do, how you do, and you're getting that information out there. And the good thing is, if you can get your plumbers, your office people, your apprentices, anybody else to take what you're doing and share it, it helps them too because now their businesses grow. Tasty Bags says some people start a separate LLC for van leasing and, and lease their own LLC plumbing company. Not sure how that works. Well, how that works is say, and, and I should have done it, that because this is the same thing when it comes to buildings. If I wanted to move my plumbing company into a new building, I would buy the building personally, meaning Roger Wakefield buys the building. Then I would lease it to Texas Green Plumbing. Pops up at the perfect time then I would lease it to them. So that way I own the building. Texas Green Plumbing pays the lease. It's it's just it's a smart way to do business. You can do vehicles the same way. I could buy a fleet of vehicles and lease them to my plumbing company. What a great thing to do. Jacob says, you, you may not be an encyclopedia, but you're an awesome plumber who cares about his customers. When you have a live stream, we all have a great time, and that's what this stream is all about. Thank you, Roger. Uh, Jacob, you're, you're welcome. Uh, I do wish I knew more numbers and facts and figures. I'm just, and that's never been a big deal with me. All right, so let's look at the tequila. Okay, so so the bourbon went 50-50, right? I'm going to scroll back up because I want to make sure what the final poll said. Okay, 54% was no on bourbon. Now, right now we're at 54% yes on tequila. Come on, people. Let me know what you think. 
Dakota, you're welcome. Thank you. Job Fisher says, I thought about leasing, but you never own. In three years, you get another new one. But the lease guy seemed, uh, seemed new, or I didn't understand the leasing. Also, in three years, put 235,000 miles on the van. Here's the way ours was set up. I think we could lease it for three years, but then if you lease it a fourth year, it was yours. So basically, you, you look at that price and say, okay, if we want to keep it another year, we can we can do it and pay for it, or we just get new vans. I love the idea of updating updating the new vans every three years. It keeps your company looking clean, fresh, new, current, all those good things. Parker says, can you elaborate on the flat rate system? Yes, sir. Parker, flat rate pricing is, is a price that that's taken. <clears throat> say that I know it takes half an hour to do a minor rebuild on a toilet and I've got $50 in parts and I'm just using easy numbers. If my price is based on $300 an hour and I know it takes half an hour and I've got to figure 50% efficiency in the Dallas area. So now I make that a whole hour. And I just said my price is based on 300 an hour and I've got 50 in parts. So the price to change that, do that minor rebuild would be 350. Now it's 350 once I walk in and do an evaluation, which we also have a service fee. And I think at the time we were charging, say, $99. So you go out, you charge them $99, you do your evaluation, <clears throat> you reach in, you say, hey, look, the, the flush valve is fine. It just needs a minor rebuild. You, you talk to them, you're, you're going to change out. Number one, I always change the flex connectors on the toilet when I shut the water off. Uh, also look at that because I don't want one of those corrugated flex risers on there that if I move it, it's going to crack and break. If they have those, I tell them I have to change that. So you've got a flat rate price of a minor rebuild, $350 plus your service fee. And if you're smart right now, you're also doing a TFS, uh, tires, fuel, and God, disposables. Uh, they call it a, a, a tire fuel service fee. <laughs> but 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 here's the deal. Say it, say it takes you an hour to fight that fill valve to get it off. Okay, that that it, you're, you don't get to charge them more. Your price is set on hey. This is the national average of what it takes to do this based on your price structure. That's how flat rate pricing systems work. You have a flat rate price for a water heater, a water heater in an attic, a water heater with a circulation pump, a power vent water heater. All your pricing is set based on your hourly rate and what it should take you to do that and what the cost of materials is. Good way to do it. Sean Strong says a boss once told me not to name your company after yourself. I agree because I don't want to buy and take over Roy's plumbing. I'm not Roy. It's a good way to look at it. Uh, Junior Drake says, do you have a plumbing certification and associates or only certification? Man, in Texas, we've got plumbing licenses. Uh, and if you're talking about the classes I do, I'm not teaching people plumbing. I am teaching them the skill set, the mindset they need to find the best trade job, to get the best trade job, to interview the best way to make the most money. Then I'm teaching them how to become the best journeyman, the best foreman, the best superintendent. I'm teaching them again, the skill set, the mindset. How do you go from, look, you can join the union, you can join PHCC. They teach you how to do the trade. I'm trying to teach them the skill set to rise above everybody else. I'm trying to teach them how to put themselves in a position to make more money, start their own business and grow their own business. That's what I want to teach people. How can you walk into a trade that you don't have to go to college for and learn and grow and become the very best? That's what I did. And, and man, I just, I want to teach it to everybody. Jacob says, you know what, Roger, as long as you do what you enjoy, it'll be plumbing as long as you're happy. That's good enough for me. And I, and Jacob, man, I do enjoy what I do. Thank you. Taste of Bags says thanks in advance for the great help. Always 
love to learn so I can improve and love your streams and videos. Cowboy says commission seems to be a lot about sales with plumbing. And Cowboy, I, and I'm going to dispute that because I want to tell you, I felt the same way when I first heard about it. I felt, I felt that way on commission and I felt that way about performance pay. But here's how it was put to me one day. If you're a professional, you're a professional plumber and you walk into my house, you should do what we call it a 360 degree inspection. We're going to inspect everything. We're going to look at everything. We're going to take pictures. We're going to take notes. And we're going to tell you about any problems we see. So if you walk into my house, cowboy, and you realize I've got a water heater that, that's 15 years old, it's in an attic, it's above my living room, and you tell me about it, and I buy one from you, you didn't sell me anything. You made me aware of a problem and let me make the best decision. And I want to tell you why I learned to look at it that way. I had gone to a lady's house. I was looking at doing a, a, a laundry room remodel because she wanted to eliminate half of a laundry room, move it out into a garage, flip it, make that room bigger to give her a bigger closet. So I went and looked at all this, and I was trying to find the water heaters to figure out where the water was ran, how it would be ran. And I went upstairs in the attic, and I looked at these two water heaters, and I sort of said, you know, one of these water heaters is 12 years old. She said, yeah. She said, but, but I'd rather have the closet right now, so I'll do the water heater later. So, okay, I'm just letting you know it, it don't look good, and it's 12 years old. Literally, she calls me three days later. That was on a Friday. She called me Monday. She said, oh, my gosh. I said, what? I said, you ain't even seen my price yet because I hadn't sent it. She says, Roger, I should have listened to you the other day on the water heater. And I'm like, oh, no, what happened? She said, it ruptured. It ruined my ceiling. It flooded the house. And they think it did it sometime Sunday. So this water heater ran for about a whole day. She got in early Monday morning because she had gone out of town. I wasn't trying to sell her anything. I probably should have tried harder. All I did was make her aware of the fact that she had a water heater in there that was old and needed to be replaced. She chose not to do anything about it. I didn't try to force it on her. I just told her, look, if, if it was me, if it was my mom or my sister, I'd be telling you, look, you need to do this now. And that's the way I left it. I wasn't trying to sell her anything. I was trying to make her aware of a problem she had. So, Cowboy, that's how I've learned to look at it. And, and man, I tell you, it works. Mikey says, we prescribe the win-win-win philosophy. Customer wins, employee wins, and the company will win. Amen, brother. Ringo Hayes, back in the house, is what happens when you already quoted a flat rate fee? Then when you start working, it turns into a bigger job due to unforeseen expenses. Well, Ringo, and I love this question. This is good too, because if you quote something and then in the middle of it, you realize it's going to cost more, you've got to be able to tell them why. Is this something you should have seen? If it is, to me, that's your fault. But you need to be able to explain that up front. Hey, look, I'm pricing a minor rebuild. I think the flush valve is fine. I can't really tell. It looks like it's holding. I, I couldn't I couldn't get any data go past it. I think it's okay. But I may get in here and, and once we replace everything else, realize that's a problem. If we go from a minor rebuild to a major, just want to let you know, it's another 200 bucks. And really, it should be more than that. But it's, I'm, I'm just going to charge you the 200 because I'm going to have to pull the tank off and I'm going to have to do this and have to do this and have to do this. But I do have one in the truck. Now, what I can do is I can go ahead and, and do that now, and we'll just say, look, you, you got your whole toilet rebuilt. Don't know that you need to, but it definitely won't hurt. Would you like me to go ahead and do that? So you give them options up front, but you also make them aware of It's just like doing a slab leak. Hey, I'm going to do my best to tell you exactly where this leak is, but you know what? I'm looking through concrete under a foot or two of dirt. I may be off a little bit, but we're going to come out, and we're going to locate this leak, and we're going to do our best to say this is exactly where it is. We have been off before because that water line may be going through a beam. It may be hitting steel. It may be transferring that sound all kinds of places around your house. But I'm telling you, we're good at this. 
and we're going to do our very best. And if you tell people stuff like that up front, man, normally they're like, you know what? I understand you, you made us aware of it, but don't just take their word for it. Put it in your estimate and let them know, Hey, here's where we're at. Uh, Sean Strong says, Cowboy, you're always selling something, whether you're doing a service, if you're not comfortable with the term sales, recommending. Amen. Uh, Mikey BMX says, shout out to my Nextstar text. Ne- Look, I love Nextstar. Nextstar is great. Sean Strong says, Ringo Hayes, you need to make the customer, yeah, make the customer a way that it's the price as long as the work is what we're seeing at the time right now. If we open this wall and find more, price can change. Taste of Bag says it's hard to start something or sometimes because other plumbing contractors act like you're asking for their secret fishing spot. It's tough to learn everything by yourself. I don't disagree, brother. That's good, though. Cowboy says, great advice. Sean says, speaking of plumbing, uh, of plumbing don't care, just got off the phone with an apprentice who's on a call, uh, got a He's got a wedding to go to at three, so guess who's on call after three? I know who that would be. Jacob Bowling says, Roger, my water here is 42 years old, and I think you can agree with me on this statement. Uh, They don't make them last like they used to. You're right. Greatest plumber of all time, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Sean will disagree with you. Uh, Jacob Bowling says, if they made water heaters like they used to, uh, we'd be paying six times as much for a single water heater. Amen. Jeff says, be sure to add a statement in your estimate, unforeseen and hidden conditions. Exactly what Sean was talking about. Guys, I have answered almost all the questions. Had one sneak in over me, on me over here. <clears throat> Sal says, is there supposed to be a spring inside of the tube manifold of a water heater assembly? Inside the tube manifold. Not... And I'm trying to think of what you're calling a tube manifold. If you mean your, your cold water inlet tube, no spring inside of there. No, uh, not that I'm aware of. What I would do is take a picture of what you're talking about and ask. Go over to the subreddit or the Discord, post the picture, ask questions in there. Got a lot of great people that can help you out. So, guys, it is an hour and a half in. And... I have got things I've got to start working on. I hope y'all had fun today. I hope you enjoyed Sipping Saturday. Uh, Let me see if I can get a better shot of that. Got a little little bottle of Jack Daniels, Gentleman Jack over here. I will not be partaking on that today, but it's nice to know it's there. Anyway, now we're looking at having fun. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, Sean put a link right there. You got more questions. There's the links to the subreddit and the discord group. Guys, please jump in, join, say hello, and man, be part of the community. I hope that y'all enjoyed it today. I know that I did. Uh, I love what I get to do. Y'all make it great. Uh, it's always a lot of fun with y'all in here. So thank y'all for being here. Y'all make my world amazing and y'all help me have fun every Saturday. I hope you got something good out of this. If you did, please leave me a comment. Let me know. If you know anybody that needs to learn some of this, share this with them. Help them learn about the trades and starting their own businesses. So glad to have y'all here. Happy Saturday. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, helping you make more money in the trades.